the reptilian alien race living among humans for centuries. According to claims, the existence of strange creatures on Earth has been depicted in many stories, even though it's hard to imagine that half-human, half-reptile creatures would exist. Well, we have the first king of Athens, Greece, was half-man, half-snake. Uh, Erichthonius and uh, the Erichtheum right next to the Parthenon the, of the Acropolis in Athens is dedicated to him. So even though it's hard to imagine that half-human, half-reptile creatures could exist, many stories serve as proof that their existence is not only a product of vivid imagination. Looking back in history, we find several tales about strange creatures that were worshipped by our ancestors in South America, Quetzalcoatl, Kulkulkan, and some of the gods which are, well, reptilian beings worshipped as gods. Quetzalcoatl is a Mesoamerican deity whose name comes from the Nahuatl language and means feathered serpent. The worship of a feathered serpent is first known, documented in Teotihuacan in the first century BC or the first century AD. A feathered serpent deity has been worshipped by many different ethno-political groups in Mesoamerican history. The earliest iconographic depiction of the deity is believed to be found on Stella 19 at the Olmec site of La Venta, depicting a serpent rising up behind a person probably engaged in a shamanic ritual. This depiction is believed to have been made around 900 BC. To the Aztecs, Quetzalcoatl was, as his name indicates, a feathered serpent, a flying reptile, much like a dragon, who was a boundary maker and transgressor between earth and sky. He was a creator deity, having contributed essentially to the creation of mankind. Kukulkan is the name of a Maya snake deity that also serves to de designate historical persons. Although heavily Mexicanized, Kukulkan has his original or his name uh, among the Maya of the classic period when he was known as Waxalclacun Ubacan, the war serpent, and he's been identified as the post-classic version of the vision serpent of classic Maya art. But these tales are not only present in Mesoamerican cultures, they're heavily present in Asia and ancient Asian civilizations who talk about dragon emperors and dragon gods. Is it possible that ancient man interacted with these strange beings that we today call the reptilians? Some people will even interpret texts in the Bible suggesting that they were linked with otherworldly reptilian creatures. The seraphim, we can read about them in the book of Isaiah. In the Bible, the book of Genesis has a story about a serpent who tempts Eve by offering her the forbidden fruit from the tree of knowledge. But these tales are not only present in Mesoamerican culture, they're heavily present in Asia and ancient Asian civilizations who talk about dragon emperors and dragon gods. Is it possible that ancient man interacted with these strange beings that we call reptilians? Some people will even interpret the text in the Bible suggesting that they're linked with otherworldly reptilian creatures. The seraphim, and we can read about them in the book of Isaiah, book of Genesis, has a story about a serpent who tempts Eve. Eve falls for the snake, snake's blandishments, and she eats that apple, and forever changes human history, causing Adam and Eve to be expelled from the Garden of Eden, and the serpent was punished, uh, doomed to slither upon the ground as a punishment for his disobeying God's will. In ancient legend, according to texts, the snake that offered the forbidden fruit to Eve was a humanoid figure prior to God punishing the serpent. What we have here is a description of a reptilian being in the Bible. In the Quran, we also have strange stories about beings that are called the jinn, who were, according to texts, present on earth prior to humans. The genies, in other words, they're demonic. The story tells that at one point, Iblis, the leader of the jinn, offended God, was rebellious and was cursed like the serpents in the Garden of Eden, becoming earthbound, trapped on earth for eternity. There is the Hopi Native American legend about three cities in the Pacific coast that were completely underground, and according to this legend, 5,000 years ago, 
a meteor shower caused strange beings, described as lizard people, to seek refuge underground. These creatures constructed an elaborate network of tunnels called uh, located under Los Angeles using advanced technology that could even melt rock. In Benares, India, there is a nearly identical legend that talks about the well of Sheshna, which in Hindu legend is an entrance into an underground city of the Nagas that according to texts are a race of semi-divine serpent people that live in an underground city called Patala. And according to mythology, it's a place where great power and only the holy could make contact with it. We have different cultures that practically share the same beliefs, cultures that, according to history, were never interconnected yet share many similar stories. The Ubaid culture is another great example of tales that talk about strange beings that resemble the description of what we today know as the reptilians. The Ubaid culture spread north across Mesopotamia, gradually replacing the Halaf culture. British archaeologist Sir Leonard Woolley was among the first to excavate modern-day Iraq in search of evidence of one of the oldest agricultural communities in the world. A humanoid figure with lizard, lizard characteristics was discovered, and it was shocked, and it has shocked archaeologists. Figurines depicting strange-looking beings with a lizard, lizard look are unique, and they are displayed in unceremonial poses that seem to indicate they were not gods, but perhaps ordinary beings living among humans. And this is on embedded reality. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.